Getting one of those reconnect things. Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Ken Muich from the uh, Fibromyalgia Wellness Center. And uh, uh, another one of those subjects that <laughs> it seems like uh, uh, come up uh, just because of uh, what's happening uh, on a weekly basis with patients. I had planned on covering this anyway. Uh, we've been hinting on this area uh, on and off, but I thought we'd spend uh, some uh, very important uh, specific time on it. Uh, the subject, why doctors have a difficult time diagnosing and then treating fibromyalgia patients. We could actually expand that out. Why do doctors have such a difficult time diagnosing in itself? You know, over the last couple of weeks now, I've had actually had patients come in and say, well, I'm still going through tests because they haven't found out what's wrong with me. Uh, I've got this or I've got that, so forth and so on. Now, I understand that some conditions... For example, MS, it takes time. And sometimes it might take over a year for them to properly diagnose MS because something that actually develops over a period of time. Hi, Shelly. How are you? Yeah, I thought I'd wear this shirt. <laughs> uh, it's getting warm out here in Arizona, and so <laughs> I thought I'd uh, get a little casual here with this uh, fun shirt. Uh, thanks for joining us. But anyway, <clears throat> very, very interesting thing uh, about this is that the National Institute of Health recognized fibromyalgia some years ago as a syndrome syndrome uh, <clears throat> like uh, chronic fatigue syndrome and some other syndromes that they have you know for me I've always considered fibromyalgia as a condition uh, but I think they throw the word syndrome in uh, because that way it don't you get the feeling sort of that, that it allows insurance companies to question whether or not you have something or not? Listen, I'm sorry. I was on the other side of the desk years ago, believe it or not. Uh, I went from uh, a science degree and went into teaching. Then I actually got a job in insurance, in sales. And then I went into management. And believe me when I tell you, when you go into insurance, uh, it opens your eyes if you're on the other side of the desk. Uh, I, I always joke around. You're not in good in you're not in good hands, and you're not buying a piece of the rock when you get buy insurance. They are there to pay money to their investors, not to shell out money to the patients or the people that sign up uh, for their programs. I'm sorry, it's a fact. You, you know, I, I might be stepping on some people's toes, but. <laughs> it's a fact. I mean, really, uh, if they can uh, somehow wiggle their way out of, of not covering uh, or paying uh, for patients' coverage or reducing it, believe me, they will. I see that all the time in our clinic. Uh, they try to find ways and so forth to do that. But let's get back to doctors. Uh, now, there's a difference between a syndrome uh, in their mind, so to speak, and RA, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, um, hypothyroidism, and so forth. And all of those can be, uh, shall we say, proven diagnostically. How? Well, that's the next thing. See, allopaths, MDs, DOs, hospitals, uh, uh, I believe also naturopaths, follow the norm of objective testing. Objective testing uh, is when they send you out for an x-ray, an MRI, a CT, blood chem, urinalysis, CBC, uh, whatever, whatever tests they have. And then they get these results back, and then they look at all these, and they look at the circles. They have a circle here, a circle here, and when they kind of cross over, then they say, aha, now we have the answer. Now we know what it is. Now, it's very, very interesting because when the... Um, uh, the first paper on through the American College of Rheumatology came out in 1990 on fibromyalgia. It was very, very interesting because a lot of doctors, even till today, but a lot of doctors just didn't, could not believe wh what they were reading over here uh, because it just didn't fit into the norm. Because as you know, if you have fibromyalgia, if you, if you don't have fibromyalgia, you're just trying to learn about it. Believe me, there are no objective tests that I just mentioned or any others that actually validate a person having fibromyalgia. So what do they have to depend upon? What do the doctors have to depend upon? Well, <laughs> they have to depend upon the patient talking to them and explaining to them their syndromes and their history. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, doctors today, 
uh, and that's MDs, DOs, DCs, uh, even chiropractors. I mean, you're in and you're out, okay? It was nice talking to you. Why? What's your name? So forth, so on. Uh, this versus what we do in our clinic. The, we take our time. We find out about the patient's conditions, symptoms, whether or not they've changed or not, so forth and so on. You have to do that through our protocol. Anyway, bottom line is that uh, do you ever get the feeling that they're not listening to you? you? ever get the feeling that you're going in and you're hoping that you have time to actually explain to them uh, what your problem is, and by the time you actually open your eyes, bingo, you're walking out the door, maybe with a bill in your hand, or maybe a receipt from something that you already paid. Very, very uh, disgruntling and disconcerting, especially for fibromyalgia patients. They need to be listened to. You need to be listened to. You need to be understood. You need to explain to the doctor who is in front of you what your conditions are and your symptoms are and how they've changed on a, a daily, weekly, uh, whatever, a monthly basis, so that he understands uh, that, or she, excuse me, uh, understands uh, how difficult your situation is so that he can properly treat you. Now, <clears throat> I think I've explained to you objective uh, versus uh, subjective testing, uh, and that is very, very difficult for these MDs, DOs, uh, and so forth. Why is that? Well, again, they, the allopaths, uh, MDs, DOs, so forth, are trained to diagnose again by way of objective testing, as I mentioned. And I get the feeling that uh, unless they have that uh, right in front of them, their open-mindedness or their thinking as far as going back with studying and tests and books and so forth may be, and I'm sorry to say, lacking. Uh, you're looking for a doctor that is open-minded, that, that will uh, hopefully evaluate you on a whole person basis for not only your symptoms, but also objective testing. So you're just not pointing in one direction or another. And that's a very, very difficult uh, for a lot of people to uh, understand. Uh, and uh, for doctors, because if you've been trained for year after year after year on how to do something, and then all of a sudden a patient comes in with this worldly thing that you never heard of, it makes a big difference. Anyway, after the paper was written, uh, uh, the first uh, paper on uh, American College of Rheumatology on fibromyalgia, there were a lot of doctors that came out and said, well, how, did, how can this be? You know, it doesn't fit into our norm of training. Well, the response from some of the doctors that actually did this research and wrote the paper uh, actually said, shame on you. Shame on you, doctors, for not only today, but also for the future, because you will be seeing certain conditions that do not fit into your norm. And what are you going to do about this? How are you going to treat this? And this is exactly what's happening today. There are some unusual conditions that are coming about on patients, and the doctors are lost. They, they can't have that open mind of thinking because they're so tunneled vision into how they've been trained. Uh, and that can be uh, just an unbelievably difficult time for the patient that, again, is sitting in front of the doctor. Uh, the worst thing you can happen is, is I think when patients come into my clinic is not knowing what's wrong with them. You know, if they actually knew it was wrong, even if it's fibromyalgia or some other condition, at least they could say, okay, I feel better. Now I can accept the fact. But for patients to be put on month after month of reevaluations and checking and testing and so forth and not knowing. Matter of fact, that's how fibromyalgia patients usually end up in my clinic because they've tried everybody else. Uh, they've been given a variety of different uh, diagnoses uh, for various conditions, which is usually correct because, as I mentioned to you, Every fibromyalgia patient I've seen since 1990, since I started working with fibromyalgia patients, just does not have fibromyalgia. You have other conditions, and they have to be treated also, but not just under the norm of fibromyalgia, as, as I mentioned. They have, to, they have to be treated separately. So if you have Lyme disease, if you have lupus, if you have RA, OA, hypothyroidism, uh, hypoglycemia, et cetera, et cetera, celiac disease, those can be treated separately. But fibromyalgia is, a, is an entity in itself that crosses over to so many of those other conditions. And so that, that makes it a very, very difficult uh, time for a lot of doctors. And again, that's why most doctors, excuse me, most patients that come in my clinic, they have an eight and a half by 11 uh, sheet of paper with all the different medications that they take. And uh, many times the doctors don't actually uh, check with each other. 
And so consequently, there are medications that cross over that might be uh, debilitating because they shouldn't be being taken at the same time with other medications. So uh, understand that you have to find a doctor who is willing to take the time to evaluate you properly. And that means not just objective tests, blood chem, urinalysis, CBC. Those are important, very, very important. But if they all come back negative, except for maybe a condition that you have, like RA, which is bone destructive, joint destructive, uh, then if the doctor is still stuck, you don't just go to a psychiatrist because it's all in your head. The National Institute of Health, the NIH, years ago even stated that this is not a condition, this is not, I'm sorry, this is not a disease, couldn't say condition, that is, requires a psychiatrist because it is not in the patient's head. It is in the body, uh, and that is something that has to be accepted by doctors. I'm sorry to say that there's still a number of doctors that have a difficult time wrapping their brain around the fact that fibromyalgia is a problem and that that problem uh, can be something that will be uh, untreated uh, for years unless it's taken care of properly. Keep in mind what I said, it could be anywhere from 6 to 8 to 10 million doctors that actually, uh, excuse me, 10, 6 to 8 to 10 million uh, patients that are either not diagnosed or improperly diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And so these are the people that are still suffering out there. Got a question. Why is there not a fibromyalgia test? Well, it's because the, there are so many different tests that are going, or, or evaluations and uh, studies going on uh, that have not really shown that there is a way to evaluate fibromyalgia through an objective test. So we have to go through the subjective form and believe it or not, listen to the patient, what they have to say. So right now, fibromyalgia is diagnosed this way. At least three months of continuous ongoing pain that moves all over their body. Along with uh, one of the other things is 18 points of tenderness. You should have at least a minimum of 11 out of 18, although that is not looked upon as a, as a severe uh, evaluation factor, but it is still important. And there's some other testing that can be done as far as similar to the 18 points, but a little bit more uh, of a um, Q&A, so, so, so to speak, uh, and also evaluation as far as pain levels are concerned. And that's a problem because, you know, some people might get a thorn in their finger, and, and all of a sudden, it's severe, and they might have to go to a hospital. Whereas other people, they got a finger that's literally hanging off, and they just said, hey, put a, put a Band-Aid on it. It has to do with uh, a certain thing called a mu factor that we all have, and that is how pain affects you, what uh, level of pain uh, affects you. Whereas somebody may have a, a pain level of 3, Another person with similar situation might say it's a 7 out of 10 instead of 3 out of 10. So you just can't go with pain uh, itself. But we do go with pain questionnaires. So in other words, it's uh, a subjective form of evaluation for a patient uh, that if the pain level affects you so that you can't go to work, then that is uh, a certain level of evaluation. Uh, so even if a person say, well, it's a three, but I'm really sick, I can't go to work, some, versus somebody that says it's a seven, and I really can't go to work. So rather than a number in itself, it's what people can and cannot do. I can't do housework. I can't, uh, I can't drive a car. I can't read a book. Uh, I, I can't sleep. It affects my sleep. So all of those things are uh, actually values or evaluated as far as values for an individual's um, uh, actual diagnosis for fibromyalgia. So, uh, and you have to go to someone that understands that, like myself, uh, that understands and be able to diagnose you properly. Just because a person comes in, a patient comes in, male, female, uh, comes in and says, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, we do not take that for granted. We do our same uh, own individual testing and evaluation uh, to make sure that we are following the right protocol. It's, I'm happy to see that other doctors are uh, actually taking the time to evaluate. But again, uh, if you, a, a doctor automatically takes it for granted uh, that a diagnosis uh, is the same from one doctor to another, uh, 
I would suggest you find another doctor uh, because uh, they need to do their own evaluation and their own diagnosis. Now, I've been doing live videos. Now, this is my 15th one. And I can't thank you, uh, each and every one of you uh, for showing up and uh, for asking questions and so forth. Uh, and uh, for those that uh, actually send me questions, questions as far as the email I, I get to them as quickly as I can I, I can't thank you enough uh, if uh, something happens after the uh, the video uh, and I get uh, questions uh, I'll answer them uh, or I may even bring them uh, to a point the next time uh, we have a talk which is every Monday at 1230 in the meantime you can check the fibro wellness center uh, my uh, my uh, website and I have produced dozens and dozens of blogs uh, on a variety of fibromyalgia subjects, but also some general health subjects that uh, pertain to fibromyalgia and the uh, general public in itself that I think are pertinent. I want to thank you so very, very much. Shelley, thank you very, very much for your question uh, and really appreciate uh, everyone uh, turning in. Uh, and keep in mind, next Monday, 1230, and uh, every day, it's going to be every Monday, <laughs> Sorry, I get excited. Uh, every Monday, 12.30 Arizona time. I, got, I was reminded by someone from Illinois that said, what time is 12.30 and, and what time zone? So rather than try to figure it out, I just say, okay, Arizona time, 12.30 on Monday, 12.30 p.m. Uh, I look forward to uh, your return and tell your friends about this. And thank you so very, very much. Have a great week and enjoy. Bye-bye now.